everybody, it's Micah. Welcome back. Um, today, we are going to start a new series that I have been kind of inspired to do on this channel. Um, I was watching a Gail video last week, and she was talking about how she, you know, gets comments and things about um, people saying, I don't have access to all of these supplies. I don't have any craft stores local or I don't have the budget to go out and buy you know all of these things and that just kind of got my wheels turning like many of you I am really pretty new to this junk journaling thing um and I also don't have a huge budget I am currently a stay-at-home mom and I feel guilty always <laughs> taking money out of our household budget for crafty supplies. My husband doesn't care. It's totally my own personal guilt. It just is what it is. And so there's that. So what this, what this is going to be is junk journal beginners on a budget is what it's going to be. I am going to do my best to make a journal front, you know, start to finish completely from scratch from items that either you may already have at your home are very easy or cheap to uh, acquire. And the only real assumptions, no kitty, smudge, no. Sorry, If there may be a cat making an appearance here. She's eyeballing my desk at the moment. Um, but what was I saying? See, she made me lose my place. Darn fuzzy things. Oh, the only assumptions that I am going to make is that you have simple supplies like a ruler, scissors of some sort, um, and an adhesive, at least one adhesive that you like. I am going to, for the purposes of this series, I'm going to rely on the Aline's Tacky Glue. This I have seen at my Dollar Tree for a, you know, bottle about this big, which is plenty to do a journal with for a dollar. Um, I got this bottle at Walmart for maybe $3 or so. This isn't my personal go-to glue. No real reason. It just isn't. Um, but that's what I'm using because I know it's easily accessible and relatively inexpensive. No, Smudge. No. And so that, and then the other one that I'm going to use is a plain glue stick. This is the Amazon Basics, just because when I started this whole junk journaling journey, uh, I ordered some off of Amazon. I wasn't going to the store anytime in the next few days. I live in a relatively rural area. My closest Walmart is about 15 minutes away, so not horrible, but I don't really like making special trips into town for a glue stick. <laughs> I try and combine everything together. So uh, I think, you know, Elmer's glue sticks are good. I haven't personally tried any of like the dollar store ones, but just whichever one you personally like, like I said, this is what I've been using and I haven't had any complaints with it so far. It's been fine. Um, as you guys can see, I've got some coffee sitting here. Um, not only am I a coffee fiend to start with but being as this is probably gonna be a little longer video my daughter had a cheer competition this weekend and after much screaming and yelling to cheer her on my throat's a little bit sore and as you can tell I'm talking probably a little differently um, I bit my tongue really badly and it's really really sore so I apologize if I'm kind of talking funny or taking excess drinks um, but I really wanted to get started on this. I'm really excited about it. So, what do you say we get started, huh? So, how? here's what we're going to do. Basically, everyone has some sort of boxed food packaging in their home. Whether it is like this is a pasta box, a cereal box. Um, this one right here is um, a macaroni macaroni and cheese box. I started this using this, but I thought that um, it's actually a little complicated with this particular fabric, so we're trying again. <laughs> um, but that's a macaroni and cheese box. Really anything. 
So this pasta box, I have simply taken apart and cut all the excess um, flaps and things off. I have not measured anything. I have not altered it in any way except to cut off the flaps to make this shape. This is the actual size. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. This is the actual size of the pasta box on the shelf, okay? So, as you can see, this is kind of going to be a chunky monkey, which is fine. It'll be fun. Um, and I think we're going to do something cool with this little uh, see-through area here. But first, we need to get started, right? So, sleeves up. Sip. I apologize. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to start, we're going to go simple, okay? This fabric is... Um, it's technically called Osnaberg fabric, but it's basically muslin. You can get muslin at Walmart, Joann's, I mean, Michael's, oh gosh, almost anywhere that has any sort of a craft section, not the Dollar Tree though. Or you can use an old tote bag that you want to cut up, um, an old shirt, anything like that. But this muslin, you can get as cheap as $2 a yard or less if you use a good coupon. Um, I have, I have simply coffee dyed this and actually we're only get we're not even going to use a yard. This isn't, this is maybe a half a yard width. Um, we're going to use, um, you know, I would say you could get away with a quarter yard for a pasta box, I think relatively easily. So what I'm going to do first is I'm not going to measure. I'm not really in a measuring mood today. So I'm just going to cut. These are my fabric scissors. You know, you can use whatever scissors you want if you are particular about your scissors like I am. These are for fabric. These are for paper. <laughs> so this is the piece we're going to use for this. Let me get the rest of this out of the way. For another day. Okay. So I think this will keep me in frame. I'm going to move these out of our way. And what we're going to do, okay, this is plenty, plenty big, okay? I'm going to take just a little bit here, inch, inch and a half-ish, okay? And I'm going to do about the same here. See? And there I go. I was going to use paper scissors on fabric. See? This is just not working today. I'm a little out of it. It's referred to as a cheer hangover after a comp weekend um, just because it's exhausting to run those little cheerleaders around. If any of the rest of you have competitive cheerleaders, I'm sure you understand. Okay, so here we go. All right, this is what we're going to start with. I'm going to take this and move it to the side. Look at that gorgeous coloring. Oh, that turned out so cute. All right. We're gonna flip it like this. This is gonna be our outside. We're gonna get our tacky glue here. I apologize, I'm gonna make some noise. Okay, I start on the spine um, when gluing fabric on. I try and make sure I've got plenty on right next to the bend there, as well as on the edges, because those are gonna be your big stress points, but we don't want this like buckling or anything anywhere so we really want to make sure we have a good solid foundation here okay so there's that now and I will say let's center this on here I'm gonna fold this okay in half this is just again you don't have to be this precise with it um this actually isn't even super precise but you don't have to be this fancy um this is just me being me I put about halfway Okay, just to try and keep things even. And then we just smooth that down real good. No, and I will say that um, I really do prefer Fabri-Tac glue for attaching fabric to things, but this stuff is kind of super crazy expensive. It's six or seven dollars for this tiny bottle in comparison to like three dollars for this bottle. So I'm not going to use this. I'm going to try not to use this at all in this series, just to stick with the 
theme of budget conscious. My goal is to have this entire cover made for under a dollar, okay? So there we go. So there's that. Then I kind of let that dry for a second. And that's why I was jabbing. Then we fold one side over, and get our glue going, okay? Oh, come on. That's one thing I don't like about this glue is it settles down and it, it's really hard to get it back up here. I think maybe I need to thin it out a little bit is what needs to happen, but we'll see. I, I'm not really sure. Um, I don't really know yet. I'm, I'm not that experienced. As I've said, I'm, I'm pretty new at this too. So we're all kind of learning together, okay? So here's this. We're going to go again. Nice, generous all over. I'm really impatient, so this kind of drives me crazy doing this part, but it's worth it in the end. Okay, again, we're just going to smooth this out and smooth it over. Okay, nice and smooth. I try and pay special attention to the edges and the bend, where the bend is, because like I said, those are gonna be your stress points. Those are gonna be places you really wanna make sure stick really well, okay? Now we're gonna grab this up, and we're gonna flip it over so we can work on this other side, okay? And this is gonna be our front cover, see, because it's got this right here, and isn't that gorgeous? Like, this is gonna be decorated by the time we're done. Um, I think I've decided on a theme for this, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I'll be deciding in the next few minutes. Um, but I really, I think this is gorgeous. Like just as a background. So here we go. Onward and upward. More noise. Sorry. Shake, 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 shake. Whoops. Off I go. I usually try and be I think I've mentioned in a previous video that part of what started me down this kind of junk journaling path is my desire to kind of push myself out of um, kind of rigid thought patterns and, you know, accepting that art is perfection regardless of what it looks like. You know, you do it for you. You don't do it for anyone else. If other people like it, awesome. If they don't, well, too bad. You did it to have fun for yourself, right? So that's what I'm really working on is just not being like super odd about stuff. So as you can see, I didn't put any glue here because we're going to cut this part out um, so that we can do a fun little label there. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to smooth. But basically I didn't want to be cutting through glue is what is, is what is what that's all about. Okay. So that's nice and smoothed out. I'm going to take another drink. Like I said, sorry guys. You don't realize how sensitive your tongue is <laughs> until you bite it. I've got like this humongous blister on the side of my tongue and it, it hurts so bad. So, okay. So this is what it looks like from the back. As you can see, it's not perfectly even or whatever. It doesn't matter because we're going to be folding all of this fabric in to make sure all our edges are covered. Now, before we do that though, we're going to trim our edges because if we don't, we're gonna end up with a lot of bulk on these corners and we don't want that. So we're gonna take it and we're just gonna trim kind of like that. You can see I left, I don't know if you can see, let me pull it up to the camera. You guys can see, let me see here. Um, there we go. Uh, I left just past that corner, just past. That way um, when we bend it over, we should, <laughs> if all goes as planned, we should have a nice covering over that corner, okay? So we're gonna trim here and do the same thing. I'm gonna keep those pieces. We might use those for some ephemera later. I'm gonna do the same here. Make sure that's not gonna come up. And then again. Okay. So as you can see, that's all good, all right? Now, let's see here. This I need to trim just a smidge because if I don't, see it's gonna go over this window and we don't, we don't want that. So we're gonna trim this 
maybe a half inch. I had pretty generous margins up here at the top and bottom anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything, I don't think. Perfect. Okay, get our glue back. Make some more noise. Shake, shake, shake. And do the top and the bottom first, okay? That way we can do any adjusting with the sides as necessary. Boom, 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 boom. Musical stylings of mica. Ha ha. Okay. Now I start in the center and kind of just tug just ever so slightly. Okay. And as you can see, I didn't glue up high enough, but we'll take care of that as we go. Okay. This glue does like grab hold really quickly, which I like for this purpose. I do like that about it. Okay. Um, and it doesn't, I tend to get a little worried about whether it'll come through the fabric. I think it did a little bit right there, but not bad at all. And actually, you know, I'm not going to worry about gluing the rest of that down. This is all going to be covered, so it doesn't really matter, okay? Flip her over. Uh, okay. Sorry, I thought I heard one of my adult kids come in, uh, but it was the dog. This place is smudge. No. <laughs> hmm. Say, this is Smudge. Say hi, Smudge. She's a sweet girl, but she should not be on my desk. My baby. Okay, get down. All right, sorry for that distraction. I have a zoo, just so you guys know. As I mentioned, I live in a relatively rural area. Um, while, I, while I yap, I'm going to do this. So I have a, a pretty hefty cat population at my house. Uh, to help keep the critters at bay. And then we also have a very large and in charge shepherd mix named Jax. And um, right now the weather's been getting colder. So all of the cats are trying to be inside cats and that's not how this works. So it's a little crazy. But anyway, so I thought I heard one of my adult children come in, but I didn't. It was just the dog playing in the kitchen. So, okay, so we're doing the same thing here. Pulling this up a little bit. Oops, see, that time that was just totally me. I need to get some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim this one up too a little bit. We really don't need that much excess. Okay, now we're gonna do the corners, or the, the sides, I mean, I'm sorry. Okay. Come on. This bottle is almost full, so that's part of why this drives me crazy because I'm like, really? This should not be that hard to get some of you out of here. Go a little further out here, guys. I'm kind of pulling with my with my finger as I go, just pulling that up so it's nice and snug on those edges, okay? Take that piece off, I don't need that. Okay, now, and as you can see, that edge there, it's a little bit frayed, but I think that's okay, especially for this fabric. All right, and that one didn't turn out quite why is nicely, but it still doesn't look bad. And from the front, it looks pretty good. Okay, so here we go for the next. Oh, goodness, golly gosh. Okay, there we go. Again, we have to be mindful of this window because we're going to cut that out here in a minute. We might have to trim this piece down a little bit. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to. Come on. Let's see. I'm just gonna cut that out. Boop. All right, there we go. Perfecta mundo. All right. So there's that. Now, as you can see, we bend. That's what we end up with. Not bad, right? 
So, this is plain and simple. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this, let me wipe my little lid off here because I don't want it to get stuck. Correct care of your adhesives is important. Don't ask about my art glitter glue <laughs> because I lost my pen and the pen that is currently in it is not stainless steel. So it's, it's just not pretty right now. I've got to order another one and I don't want to spend the money because, you know, budget, it is what it is. Anyways, okay, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to, you can use scissors for this. I'm going to use this little exacto pen thing that I, I have no idea where I got this. I have probably had this for at least a decade. I have no idea where, where I got it from. But I, otherwise, I would just use scissors. But I'm just going to get this started a little bit here so that I can get my scissors in there. And, okay, so actually I'm going to leave just a smidgen. I'm not gonna cut this whole thing out because what I decided is probably smarter, y'all. See how I'm gonna cut this See, up to the edge. Okay. So you see what I did there? Now, I'm going to cut this, like, acetate off because we don't need that. And it's just going to get in the way of what we're going to do next. So we're just going to chop those little pieces off. Now, hindsight's 2020. what I should have done is just rip this off before I even covered it, but we didn't, so we're just rolling with it here, you guys. All right, so there's that. So what we're actually going to do, need this again. We're going to take this, move the scissors out of the way, make sure you're still in frame because I'm moving stuff all over the place, and I'm going to shake, 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 and like this around you see what I'm doing kind of push that through. because then that will make a nice frame for whatever we decide to put there I think okay so here's here's what I'm thinking theme wise y'all Originally, with that other journal over there that I started with, I was going to do, like, a nature journal um, because I think they're awesome. I think the green fabric really lends itself well to that. Um, but since that didn't work, I was thinking, well, do I want to make a nature journal? Or another one that I kind of had on my list for a while, um, but I haven't started or done anything with yet is a coffee journal. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, the cat just turned on my son's computer, cool. So that little hot mess express right there. Let's cover this up. So look at that, okay. That's cool, I don't care, that's awesome. See? Okay, that makes me so happy. All right, now, but but what we're gonna do is we need to put, we're gonna need to put something there, right? We have a couple of options. First though, I need a sip. Um, actually, since I'm gonna do a coffee theme, one second, I need to grab something. Okay, I bought this paper pad at Michael's for $5. They will do them, these, these are the like hot buy paper pads. They will do these for $5 pretty frequently. I wanna say it's like once a month or once every other month, something like that. Just so happened to be doing it on a day that I was in the town, that there is a Michael's, which is about an hour away. So I stopped and I bought this one. It's obviously a coffee theme, which is perfect. I'm not actually 
going to use a whole lot of this, I don't think, just because it might be a little too matchy-matchy for me. We'll see. But you can use any scrapbooking paper. You can use... Um, the reason I wanted to grab this is I wanted to see... These have... Isn't that cool? I just love it. Um, these paper pads generally have... Um, some little sheets that have like this and I wanted to see if there was one that would go right here oops hmm what do you guys think That's actually really cute. It doesn't like say anything that, you know, that it's about the journal, but see, that's too big. Mm, I don't really like that either. That would be cute. Mm, I don't know. Let me see if there's another. I thought there might be another one. Ooh, what do you guys think? I kind of like that. Yeah. That one's a maybe. Let's see, let's see if there's anything else in here. Let me think. Eh, not big enough. Oh, too big. But first coffee, always a good, beautiful day. Hmm. You know, nothing is really jumping out at me. And I hate to be like wasting your time doing this, but I was really hoping that something would super, hmm. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is I think I'm just gonna take, I wanna take a relatively plain piece of this and use it as a, maybe as a background. And then maybe later on, we will figure out what we actually want to put, what we wanna title this. Because I don't really know. Oh, I do, I do kind of like that though. What do you guys think? No, 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 no. I know what we're doing. We're doing the good morning. That way it can be a, <coughs> excuse me, a morning reflections journal. If someone chooses. Or if they use it, you know, more as a day, you know, as a um, kind of a planner type of a thing. Um, then I'm, I'm cutting this super sloppy, you guys. Super, super sloppy. Because um, I feel like I wasted enough of your time doing that. Okay. Set this aside. So what we want to do, this guy does not want to stay down. There we go. So we're going to cut this. I'm going to cut this a little generously because we're going to glue it. And I want to make sure that there's plenty of space for this to um, really adhere well. Okay. So, and actually what I'm going to do, so 
I also want to make sure I want to get this in the right spot. Okay, let's get this glue out again. Let's see what we got going on here. This stuff dries clear, so I'm not super concerned if it shows a little bit. Um, oh my gosh, this glue. All right. We don't need a whole ton on this part. Um, because I don't want it to goop and gop everywhere. <laughs> goop and gop, yeah, no, technical word for it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hold it like this so that I can put that down. And then there we go. I'm going to push down just to get it here and there. You know, I kind of like that. I really do. And then this will be decorated somehow. We'll, we'll get to that point later on. I usually tend to do covers the decoration part anyway, not right at the beginning because I never really am 100% certain what I want to do. Okay, so you may say, now what? Okay, this is what we've got going on. Looking awesome. I love it. Now we're going to line the inside. Um, you can use fabric for this. I'm going to use paper because, uh, one, I have that pad that I am going to go ahead and use for this um, to cover this. Since I've done the outside in fabric, I'm not going to do a fabric here um, just because um, I really kind of just, I just don't want to, <laughs> even though the fabric does give you more stability and will wear better um, longer term. but. There's fabric on the outside, so I'm not going to put on the inside. So let's find a paper real fast. I, I might do this one. That's so cool. I want something colorful. Like I told you guys, I like colors. I don't want to do the macarons because macarons, macarons, um, because it's a coffee journal, not a cookie journal. Not that there's anything wrong with a cookie journal because, I mean, we talked before about how cookies are awesome. Mm -hmm. That might be cute too, though. Mm. You guys, I'm so indecisive. I mean, you kind of wouldn't believe it. I like this one. I just, I, well, see, so indecisive. This might go better because this is kind of going to be a vintagey. You know, I'm going to use coffee dyed paper and stuff in it. So, there we go. Okay. So, here's this. So, what we want to do is move that and move that. And, oh, this is almost perfect width-wise. Because, like I said, I didn't measure this pasta box at all. I need another sip. Okay, hmm, so this is almost perfect. If you can see, I set this where the corner will go, and then I just wanted to, I leave it up a little bit from the edge and in a little bit from the edge because you don't want it to go all the way to the edge because then it'll get worn, right? Uh, let me grab a pencil, and I'm just gonna mark this right here. Okay, and then up here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Right about there. Okay, so I know where to cut. You can use scissors, obviously. I'm actually, for this, going to use my cutter. I got this baby on clearance at Hobby Lobby for $6. <laughs> totally lucked out, absolutely. Okay, so line this up, find your mark, which is harder than you think. There it is. Okay. We're going to keep this bad boy for later. I'm going to do the same thing this way. There we 
go. And keep that one. Ooh, that'll make a good, nice piece of ephemera right there. So here we go, okay? Put this away. Now, look at it. Awesome, right? So cute. Now, I am going to take this and bend it up. Here's just a tip. This is <laughs> just one of those like plastic, like a gift card works perfectly. This was in a puzzle that my husband and I are working on. So I kidnapped it. So you find where you're bending and then I just use this card to help keep this pushed against that edge. That way we don't lose space. You know, we don't get it all unaligned. That's the word I'm looking for, aligned. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Sorry, guys. You're not going to see this one. I should have flipped this over. Just the same sort of thing. We want to do this before we get it glued, just so that those, um, so that those lines are already there. And then we can kind of do it a little more. You can use a bone folder or the card to fold this, you know, better. I don't know that it really needs it. This is more for placement than anything else. Okay. So again, we're going to do kind of what we did with the front. We're going to take this and shake it and be annoyed about it. Okay. Because that's how we're rolling. And then, you know, generously... Oh my goodness, you guys, this glue is driving me crazy. Whoops. Okay. I cannot do that one-handed, apparently. Surprise, surprise. Oh, see, it's already down. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm going to have to figure something out that I can, like, set this down upside down. That'll be my project for later on today. Okay. There we go. I'm going to take this, make sure it's right side up, and center it. Oops. Kind of where you want it to go. Okay. You can see I've left. Really push this down, okay? Really push this down good. If you really want that to grab that fabric and the, the board underneath. Really push that down, okay? There you go. And you're gonna do this side. Again, pay, pay close attention to your corners and your edges because that's where the most wear and stress is going to come on your books, okay? Now, you know, if this is something for you personally and something comes undone, you can fix it. But if it's something you decide that you're going to sell at some point later on, you don't want you don't want someone to have to do that. You want it to be perfect for them. So um, looking at cost, okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we used almost one sheet of 12 by 12 